Welcome everyone back to Pommy and Oz. Hope you're all doing really well. If you're new around here, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. We're absolutely smashing out the subscribers, so I can't thank you enough for the support. Um, we've started to get a little bit active on the old TikTok. We've started to get active uh, on the shorts as well. So if you found us on the shorts, welcome. Say short crew in the chat. Come a member. We've got some special guests on Sunday. We've got two of them who are going to be answering all your super coach needs. So if you are a member, that'll be a members only exclusive. They're going to take us right through from the basics to the expertise so you can become the legends that they are. Looking forward to that because I am, believe it or not, a super coach noob, to be honest. It's not really my forte, so I might pick something up in that. Today, we are looking at good friend of the channel. He did a video, Jesse from True Footy, predicting the All-Australian. So a few of you sent me that video. I had a look-see at it. And I thought, let's have a crack ourselves, shall we? So let's go over to the old Pom Australian blank canvas. A blank canvas we have to start with. As you can see, as usual, we're using Excel. So I'm going to take creative license, um, as the All Australian selection panel do. I'm going with Jacob Weir in to get his first All Australian nomination. He has been in and around. All Australian nominations, probably throughout his career, it feels like. Apart from that time, Bolton had a bit of a laugh and played him full forward. I think even though he's going to be missing the first two, three games of the year, I still think that 18 games minimum is enough to do it. I, I feel like Wheatering is going to be a real big point of Carlton's development this year. I, I suspect that from looking at the preseason games, Carlton have been a little bit more route one more adventurous in the back half of the ground. And I think when you look at what Wheatering does, that is definitely his point. That is definitely his skill set. I feel like when Wheatering has the ball, he really looks to get the game going. We're looking at Carlton's more dynamic running, particularly through the corridor. That helps him out as well, hit some targets. And I think he'll stand out. I think they'll name him on the back pocket, though. They won't give him his full birthright. We've seen with Coleman medalist, they get named in the forward pocket. So we're doing the same here. Fullback, Harris Andrews. I watched Jesse's video. He says that he doesn't see him dying down. I think Harris Andrews is genuinely the best fullback in the league at times. He is sensational. Whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's taking off the forward and going for the intercept mark, he's a very tough cookie to beat. Genuinely uses it pretty well. And I think that that's a no-brainer. I think he's one of them players that he's a walk-up star, isn't he, in these type of events. Definite walk-up start. Up next, first All-Australian. I've gone Wanganeen Milwera. I'm looking at what St Kilda do, and I don't want to buy into this hype of, oh, their back ball half movement looks really good. I'm not silly. But when I look at that movement in isolation, they've got some users there that could really damage you. And it's definitely something that I'm looking with a very vested interest in St Kilda of what they add. We know that everyone always says, I think it's lazy analytic skills to say that Ross is very boring and one-dimensional. Last year, there was definitely signs that he'd started to add layers. I think he will again. And I do think St Kilda will make up quite a few selections, particularly in the extended squad. Another new face. I really like this. Nick Martin moving down to halfback. He's been everywhere, hasn't he? Started life as a forward, came into the system dominated on the wing last year. I think they haven't had a player like Nick Martin play halfback since they gave Cow and Saad, which was nice of them. He might play for the scum, but he's a very, very good footballer. I think Nick Martin is going to absolutely ostentatious numbers in the AFL. He's going to look like Mary Poppins doing songs with the stat sheet. I think he's going to be outrageous. I'm really looking forward to seeing Nick Martin play off halfback. He's got some zip. He's got some energy. He takes the game on. And I think he's going to be an All-Australian nomination. Centre halfback. I had him in my old Pom Australian last year. And it was a shock that the AFL agreed with me. I think Sam Taylor is absolutely terrific at what he does. He's a sensational footballer the way he plays. Very good one-on-one. -on -one, very good mobility as well. I think GWS are really going to be a more team orientated side this year. So Sam Taylor, without a shadow of a doubt, in my centre half back. And then potentially the best halfback flanker in the competition, Jack Sinclair. I think you're really going to see Milwera and Sinclair 
be a real counter punch side. When you look at St Kilda's makeup, it makes sense to be this way. And Jackie Sinclair, he's he's a he's a terrific footballer. He's one of my favourites to watch. On the wing, we've gone with a bit of creative license. I think he'll play a bit of halfback flank wing and on the ball. But Nicky Dacos, the best under twenty one footballer in the league absolute jet of a footballer and he, he's only going to go strength for strength. He's probably one of the few players. There is another player that we're going to name in this that I think is Stonewall for a while, but Nick Dacos, I think you can already lock. He's going to have 10 all Australia jerseys and um, jackets by the end of his career, bare minimum, absolute terrific footballer has no real weaknesses. Jai Newcomb, I think with Hawthorne going to get gradually better. I think he's going to really take on the mantle as Mr. Hawthorne himself. I'm really looking forward to this one with uh, Jai Newcomb because he's a really, really strong footballer. And he added layers here, which I don't think people talked about. He he really hits that handball. He hits them short targets. He wins the ball back, runs hard both ways. I think Jai Newcomb is a no-brain into this squad. And perhaps wingman in the league, Errol Goulden, will finish at the centre line. Absolutely splendid his football. He's he's dynamic. He doesn't mind digging the player up and taking them on. Real baller. Half forward flank and most cooking TikToks. Body is a very good football. Jim Petraka, the track dog, he is very deadly. And I think a lot will rely on Christian Petraka this year. I know a lot's been made up of our field and it doesn't really translate on field, but I think it does in some ways. Petraka is a model professional. Um, he changes games. He's an X-factor talent and he's one of them players that just naturally stands out. Center half forward in the twilight of his career, but I think we'll run Charlie Gurno first. Um, very, very close. When Charlie dominates and gets his third common but Tex Walker, I suspect that they are going to be very strong this year. I've got Adelaide pushing for top four. I think Taylor Walker will be absolutely back to his best, particularly with looking at their first preseason game. There was a lot of onus on quick ball and getting the ball up there faster. That suits Taylor with his early leads. I think he's a shoe in. Brisbane, Hugh McCluggage. Big creative license here, but he does rest half forward. I think the most underrated footballer in the league. I'm a big fan of the clog. He has got everything you want in a modern-day footballer, and particularly his dynamicness to enter inside 50. He's very smart and will pave the way. Isaac Rankin, you know, I've got him as one of the most improved players. I think he's going to have a year like Bobby Hill had in the finals. I think... I see him being an absolute mercurial talent. I can see him 40 goals plus. Full forward, Charlie, the man, Kerner. Without a shadow of a doubt, people are sleeping on him. And I keep smiling every time I see people sleeping on him. Because Charlie Kerner, there's not much he can't do. Whether it be an underwear model, whether it's selling fireman's calendars, whether it's kicking snags, Charlie Kerner is the master of it. And for me best forward in the comp and we've rounded up the top four in this of goal kickers stay tuned for the bench but Jeremy Cameron joins at the forward pocket he'll have a strong year and I don't think Geelong will be as bad as people say Maxi gone without a shadow of a doubt the best ruckman in the league and he looked I know it was a practice game but he did look in incredible form I can't see anyone doing it I'm trying to get Tim English in it in here, but Max Gorn, he's, he's, he's like an old pair of slippers, isn't he? You, you go to the shops, you see some new slippers, and you're like, oh, they've got a nice little fluffy interior. They'll keep me tootsies warm during winter. But then you go back home, and even though your slippers are talking, your feet have never felt so safe, and that's Max Gorn, isn't it? Patrick Cripps returns to All-Australian. I think Patrick Cripps is going to have this absolutely dynamic year. Looking at how Carlton play, I think it goes against some of Carlton's players that are so contested. I think you'll see it stand out this year. I think Cripps is going to absolutely tear it up. Everyone's focused on Walsh. Everyone's focused on Jarrah. Cripps is going to remind everyone why he is the best in the business. And he's mate alongside him, Marcus Bonapelli. That, that, that follower line in real life, we can see that play will be worth every cent they charge to enter on it. Marcus Bonapelli, 
Um, I think the doggies will bomb, but I think Bonapelli will actually get better because they bomb. Over to the bench, we've gone Zach Butters. I was looking at Connor Rosie, I was looking at Butters, and I was looking at Sam Walsh. And it's a real tough one, uh, I think, at times, because I think Butters is just going to play all the games, and I think his game style, for me, attracts the eye a bit more. All three of them terrific footballers, but I'm a sucker for a little bit of hard edge. Lockie Whitfield, I think GWS are going to surprise a few teams this year, and I think they're going to be more well-rounded. <laughs> But I do think you're going to see a return of form from Lockie Whitfield. He seems to have been playing everywhere in the two practice games that I've seen. I think Lockie Whitfield comes back with a bang. We needed a halfback. We've gone Kitty Coleman. He looks sensational in the preseason games as well. He really stands out, real dynamic and modern day footballer. He's got that. He's got that gravy about him, hasn't he? That he just makes the game better when you watch him. I'm a big fan. I love the zip. I love the energy. And finally, we've gone Nick Larkey from the North Melbourne Football Club. Absolute splendid footballer. I think that's going to be the top four of the Coleman, Charlie Kerno, Tex, Cameron and Larkey. And I think he's a well-deserved player there. That is my All-Australian. Let me know yours in the comments and we'll have a discussion. Much love. Peace, love and light. Pom out. Rolling up over black Cadillac, high heel boots, and a sexy body full of tats. Baby's bad, oh, baby's having.